So at this point, we've resurrected the site. We've brought it back to life. This is what we had last week. Uh, we would follow a similar procedure to get the site up and running on a real server, but that'll require a more in-depth talk a little later. And then also, it's going to vary for every person. If you've got GoDaddy, your procedure is a little different. If you've got Bluehost, your procedure is a little different. Whatever real service provider you have, the concept will still work, but the procedure will be a little different. So I want to do a couple of things here. We've got, uh, if you're new, we've got the ability to switch back and forth up on the menu bar here. We're currently visiting the site as a regular user, and if I wanted to go back to edit the site, you hover over the name of your site and you click on Dashboard. So we've got the Dashboard, which is the control panel, which is where we edit the site, the back end. And then if you hover over, we've got Visit Site, which is the front end, which is what people see. You can also simply click the name of your site, Victor's Bakery, and it goes back end, front end. So we're going to get used to that if you're not, if you're not there already. I'm in the front end, I want to go to the back end, because on the front end I have a few weird things that I want to fix. So uh, just to test things out, I had called my menu item right there, home. Well, I want to call it home. And then here, all about our amazing shop. Well, I didn't want the menu to say that. I wanted the page at the top to say all about our amazing shop, but I didn't want the menu to say that. I just simply wanted the menu to say about. The menu here says blog, and over on the blog, it's got the actual blog posts. So in short, I want to edit the menu a little bit. It doesn't look exactly what I want, how I wanted it. What I also eventually want to do today is talk about the big topic of WordPress updates. People always ask me about WordPress updates, and this has this necessitates a discussion. So if you notice, there's a number at the top. Mine says 5. Yours probably also says 5. If it doesn't, that's okay, but that's telling you we've got updates. We'll talk about what, update, what updates are and my recommendations on update procedures. The first thing I want to do is edit this menu. If you're in the front end like me, there's a shortcut. Hover over the name of your site and go to menus. If you're in the if you're already in the dashboard, back here, the back end, then you need to go to appearance and then menus. Let's edit our menu a little bit. Appearance menus. It shows here my current menu is the main menu. I have also the social menu. I can create as many menus as I want. I just need to make sure that I've switched and I'm editing the one that I think I am. I want to edit the main menu, so make sure that's the one selected. Main menu. These are my items, home, Amazon, which is a drop-down link, all about our amazing shop, and blog. Well, I don't want it to say home with four question marks. I want it to have a normal home. So click the triangle next to the, the menu item. Navigation label is what text appears on screen. So instead of it saying home with four question marks, we can make the, simply make it say home. Notice there is no save button for this link. There's a save menu. So you can either make a change to an item and then save the menu, or make all of the changes you want and then click save. But don't forget to click Save, because if you move to another screen and you never saved it, then your menu didn't save. It won't be updated. So I've changed Home so that it says something better. I'm going to close that so little triangle. Menu no, we don't want this one, because this is going to open a new window for the link. Well, you don't want to open new windows on links of your own site. So when you go from home to about to contact a blog, all of that's in your own site. If you turn that on, you're going to open a new window and another new window and another new window. You're going to have all of these tabs at the top and confuse people. 
We only want to open link in a new window if we go to Amazon or GoDaddy or Target, you know, some other website. If you if your link here takes you to some other website, then yes, turn on new new window, but not not on an internal link. Question. Sorry, yeah. How do you after the so you wanted to say the word home up on the address here? When I go to that page, I want to see on the address what page I'm in. You will automatically see that, except that home is a special case. Okay. Home isn't going to have the extra home at the end. If you look at blog, for example, well, it doesn't show you here, but it, it's basically it's automatic. It will have this address up here properly set. We'll see when we create other pages, like the shop screen, let's say. What I also want to do on this screen is in the menu, I don't want to just say all about our amazing shop. I just want to say about. I want it to say all about our amazing shop on the screen, but not in the menu. So same thing here. We can click on the triangle under the navigation label, simply change that to about. So the title on the page won't have that sentence. The title on the page will have it. it will. So on the page itself, when you go to the page, it will still say about our amazing shop. Yeah. But I don't want it to say our amazing shop in the menu. Yes. What's that? It says about the up on the address as well. About, yes. The Question. title attribute is that for um, a menu? It could be, but it doesn't quite matter for us here because the title is uh, when you roll your mouse over and it pops up, and that works best for pictures. That's the point of the title tag for pictures, so that so, you know someone can use their screen reader to read a picture. These links are already text, so then that would be redundant to have a text description of a text menu. But if we had a graphical menu, we would want the title attribute for ADA compliance. Yes. How do you go to the about page so quickly? I mean, I saw you click the menu and I just went back. Well, uh, so when you make the changes in the menu, you just you want to see how it looks like when you about Usually, the way that I do it is I have two tabs. One tab is for my dashboard, and another tab is for the actual site. So then that way I can quickly jump between the two. And you can open a new tab by uh, right clicking and then a uh, new tab. But then when how, how you go to the about page first? Do you type it in up, up there or do you? No. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. There. Yeah. Okay. So any changes that you make to the menu, remember to click Save Changes. And then to see what this looks like, well, you can then hover here and click Visit Site. And now my menu says simply Home and About. But if I click on, a, on the About link, it's still going to say all about our amazing shop. All right, so that, did that work for everyone? You edited your menu? Um, how did you get the uh, text for all about our amazing shop? Mine still says home, welcome to our site. On the menu? No, in the center section. Yeah. Well, because you're on the home screen, you need oh, to I'm click on the about screen. button okay. and then yeah, see. Sorry about that. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, now, so that was a little bit of uh, editing again the the menu items. Um, let's talk then about the well, not again, but let's talk now about the updates. WordPress is software that is updated on a regular basis like most software. You have maybe a Windows computer and let's say you bought it a few years ago, maybe it has Windows 7. Uh, if you buy a brand new computer now, it'll have the newest one which is Windows 10. Well, you could upgrade your Windows 7 computer to a Windows 8 computer operating system and then to a Windows 10. Same thing on the Mac. If you bought a Mac a few years ago, it had Mac OS 10.7, let's say, and then eventually 10.8, 10.9, etc. So the operating system software of your computer updates. Same thing on your smartphone. If you have an iPhone, you, you would have had iOS 7, 8, the newest one that just came out, 9. If you have an Android, well, you had uh, Android 4.4, you had 5.0, 5.1, etc. The software is always updating on, on the device as well. Well, software updates too. If you've used Photoshop for any amount of years, you might have used Photoshop CS4 and CS5, etc. And then the latest one is Photoshop Creative Cloud 2015. It updates, software updates, it, it, it always improves. Um, and so I remember, um, I don't remember the full details of it, but I remember there was a, uh, it was either Tim Cook or Steve Jobs, one of the CEOs of Apple, one of those two, was hauled in front of a congressional committee to start asking about security issues about their software and such. And I think it was John McCain that says, you know, why do you keep updating my phone? I like it the way it is. Why do you keep changing it? And then the CEO said, uh, we have to. Security issues. You want a better uh, better phone, don't you? So that could happen. It could not work the same as we thought. Uh, things change. We get upset. Well, WordPress software is like that too. WordPress is not going to be stable and stagnant all the time. WordPress is currently on version 4 point something, and it was on version 1 and 2 and 3, etc. So we have to deal with updates in WordPress. But it's unfortunately not as simple, ma simple of a matter of clicking update and we're done. We have various things we need to, to keep track of. So let's have a discussion now on WordPress updates. Do you see on the top row a little number with a little spinning arrow? Go ahead and click on it. That takes you to the dashboard if you're not there already. It takes you to the dashboard under the updates uh, screen. And here we have three broad sections. The first section at the top, mine says, an updated version of WordPress is available. And then next comes a section called plugins. And then a section called themes. Those are the three main things that can be updated in WordPress. I'm going to make some notes here, and I'm going to put it into the network folder by the end of the day. You can make notes if you'd like, but I'm going to make notes here regarding updates. So update updates notes notes on updates we have three possible update uh, three possible update um, features we've got the core WordPress software we've got plugins and we've got themes it's the core software itself Themes and plugins run on top of the core software. And for me, it seems to be saying that version 4.3.1 is the latest version. 4.3.1. When you have a, the first large number there, 
that's like a big, big update. When it goes from version 1 to 2, that's like lots of big changes. You may, you may see a big change in the interface, new buttons, new features. I've been using WordPress for a while, and I've seen it evolving. It used to be, it used to use the style that was, that was in vogue a few years ago with shiny buttons and drop shadows and all of that stuff. And now it's using the modern flat style, which is more pastel, simpler colors, if you don't know what I mean. Don't worry about it, but in the old days, the software itself looked differently. Just like when you update your, your computer, when you update your, your smartphone, suddenly one day it looks different. The icons are all different, most likely because a big version number change happened from 3 to 4 and so forth. And you've got a sub number, like 0.3 for example, that's also a big change, but not as, but not as big and, <coughs> and noticeable as the main version change. And then you might also have a, a small revision number like that, which often has to do with small changes, small feature changes, or maybe security updates. So this is main version 4, subversion 3, revision 1. That's the latest version. Um, let's see, we have currently version... Uh, we have currently version 4.2.5. So it's still in the in the four in the the world of four. If we had a site that was on back on version three or two, then I would definitely be start talking about you really need to do consider doing updates because big version numbers like that give you a lot more features, stability, security, uh, security features. The problem however, of updating from a big version number from 3 to 4 and such is it could break your site. Your site could be working just fine on version 3.7 and then you upgrade to 4.3, that's a big jump. That's kind of like changing the foundation of your house. It's possible, but very difficult. So all of these updates, in short, all updates, well, let's say right here, in short, updates are important. You, you should do updates. In long, don't do updates without a plan. I do want to update my, my old rickety WordPress 3.7 to the brand new shiny 4.3, but I don't want to do any of those big updates unless I know I have a backup of my site. And what's that one software that I'm always recommending in this class to make perfect backups of your projects? Duplicator. duplicator. So, if you do have an old version of the site, you want to get the duplicator plugin, which is free, make a perfect copy of your site, and then start your updates. Because if something goes wrong, you can use duplicator to bring it back, like we did at the start of the day. Like we do every time we come back here. Yes. Does Duplicator work for Mac? Yes. Duplicator, actually WordPress itself is, is platform agnostic. It doesn't care on what software, what computer it runs. So Duplicator will, wrote, will work on a Mac because it doesn't pay attention to that. It only works on WordPress, and WordPress works on a Mac. What about browser compatibility? That's not so much of an issue, but if you're using Internet Explorer version 7 or something, you might have trouble. Um, so, usually with the newer web browsers, you'll be fine. So, um, let's see, the latest for us at the moment is 4.3.1. Um, I'm also going to say the, the order that you should update is a little backwards. You should update your, your, your software in this order. Core WordPress, then themes, then plugins. Because the core WordPress is like the foundation of a building. The theme, well, it's all the paint and the window treatments and all of that. And then the plugins are, I guess, like the tables and those sorts of things. So it's much more of a problem if you. <coughs> 
if you if your WordPress doesn't work, if you do all of the work of updating plugins and themes, and then you do the WordPress, and suddenly that breaks everything, you've got a lot of work to do to get back to normal. So if you first do your WordPress update, and then do your other kinds of updates, you might get better results. So, yes? I noticed on a couple of occasions uh, when I updated WordPress, it, uh, it failed. And the reason it failed was because of a plugin. And therefore, what I had to do was disable the plugin, update the WordPress, and then re-enable the plugin, and then it worked. You have a special case there, and good thing you managed to figure out the solution. I'll write it down for us here if, other pe if this happens to other people. Sometimes these updates happen, uh, you do them, and they work just fine. And sometimes there's some problem, and then you've managed to figure out one solution for yours. So it might also be useful for other people. So I'll write that down. Uh, but here I'm saying, uh, here's a possible order to do your updates. Uh, or not update. Uh, backup back up the site in duplicator so that we have a perfect copy of your site then update core WordPress software so go from version 3 to version 4 then test the site make sure that it still works all your links are still there your plugins still behave your shopping cart still works so test your site then, if that works, back up the site. So now you've got another starting point there. You've got now, well, if I got this far, great. I'm going to proceed. If, there then, if then there are problems, I'm not going to revert all the way back to this point where I need to install WordPress again. I'm going to revert back to this point where I know WordPress works. So next I would do update the theme. No, that just means to create a backup with duplicator. But that's the first time, and then after you do the test. Then you back it up again. You make another copy and duplicate it. So you've got a copy of it before you made the update, and then you've got a copy of it after the update. Because if you make any mistakes further down the line here, you only have to back up this far instead of that far. So I backed up the site, I updated the theme, I tested the site. If the site works, what do you think is next? Back it up again. You might not need to do all of these steps all the time, but if you've never done backups on your site, if you're new to this, it's better safe than sorry. It's better that I've got three copies of my site in a, in a, in a folder called October Backup than having one backup from six months ago with a lot of work that you would lose from then to now. So at this point, I've got now another baseline, another starting point. WordPress has been updated, my theme has been updated, now it's time to update plugins. Update plugins, and then you know what comes next. Test the site again. And then if that all works, back up the site a final time, because there's never a final backup. There's always a new backup. Yes? So when you said you have a standard of six backups for October, in the three backups, are you three backups, or are you doing it within suggested updates? Any way you want to, any way, however complex you want to be, however detailed you want to be, is perfectly fine. Um, because, for example, in this process right here, I did create one, two, three, four backups. They are all going to have slightly different times. Remember, the duplicator uh, plugin creates an archive with a really long name. In that name, it's labeled down to the minute, I believe. So you're going to have four different zip files with four different backups. So then all four of those, I did them in October, so I would put it in the October folder. 
So just whatever way you want to manage your backups, as long as you've got copies and backups and save somewhere safely. Do you, do you need to keep all four of these, or just the final one? Maybe you just need the final one after you've tested all of this. Uh -huh. Because, yeah, these could be taking up extra space you don't really need. We know it works all the way to this point, so maybe I don't need these. Maybe I would keep this one before any updates, just in case, and wait a little while, maybe one month. Okay. And then keep that one. So it's gonna, it's, this whole backup process is, is its own huge discussion to talk about, but in short, make a backup copy. Hard drives are, are, are cheap and plentiful. You know, you can get a four terabyte hard drive nowadays. So if you want to keep all of these backups forever, there's space for it. But if you want to be frugal, definitely clean out the ones that are, are not going to be that necessary in between major backups. Mm -hmm. Question? Oh, you answered it. I was just saying it, it doesn't overwrite your back when it does no. backups. It doesn't overwrite. So you can always go to a different yes. previous version. That's right. Mm -hmm. It keeps. It makes a new one because then one that kept erasing your old backup is not a real backup because then you're always you don't have a safety net. So every time you've got a new backup, you've got a safety net to bring you back to a previous point. This is the order that I would recommend, and I'm going to fine-tune a little, a little bit more here after update the theme. Well, if we look on our possible updates on this testing site, under themes it says, okay, there's an update for the Canyon theme, the 2015 theme, the 2014, and the 2013. True or false? I'm going to update all my themes. No? Why not? I'm only using one, yes, but what if this one's got a virus? So that's a trick question. You do want to update all your themes, but you don't want 20 themes. If you're only going to use one theme, why do you have 19 themes hanging around doing nothing? except begging for backups, I mean for updates, and maybe getting viruses. So what I would recommend, you're probably going to find some sort of unique theme, maybe a premium theme, that's definitely the one you want to update, and I would still keep around one theme just in case, if I need to turn off my main theme to go to another theme, I usually like to keep the basic 2015 theme, that's the official WordPress theme, and then these other ones, these are old. These are passe. Their style is not in vogue anymore. Their technology is old. So I would, I would keep the, my premium theme, Canyon in this case, and 2015, which is the basic official WordPress theme. So regarding updating themes, update your current or live or active is what they call it, your active theme. Update your one backup theme. You don't need to have seven themes deactivated there. They're taking up space on the server. They're taking up resources. Even though you're not using them, they are asking for updates. This is saying, hey, go from 1.5 to 1.6. Go from 1.4 to 1.5. Go to 1.2 to 1.3. So these are using up your bandwidth. These are using up your internet resources on your server. So let's take a little segue over here. Let's get rid of these themes that we're not going to even use. Where in my dashboard do I find where all my themes are installed? Under Appearance, Themes. So let's go to the Appearance menu, Themes. My currently active theme is 2015. I've got that nice premium theme that I like. I don't have it active at the moment, but I'm going to keep it. But I don't want 2014 and 2013. So to delete a theme, click on its theme details. Hover over the theme, you'll get theme details. And then on the bottom right, delete. We can always download these again. We don't really need to because it's kind of a plain theme. It's old technology. Delete. So at this point, I freed up a little bit of my server resources, and I'll do the same thing for 2013. Question? So, you know, 
know when I've gone to look at the entire collection of things that they have available, how would I determine whether it was an old fashioned thing that even though it looks nice to me, maybe it's not a good choice? When you uh, when you're looking at the whole theme marketplace to to find a theme, you're always going to see something about theme details and such. You want to click and read what this says. Okay. This is going to tell you uh, when it was last updated and, and published and what features it has. So if it show if it looks nice and modern, but you look there and it says has not been updated since January 2014, then it might be old. Okay. Uh, and not old simply for the sake of getting something new and shiny, but because WordPress has the largest user base in the world, it also means it's the largest target for hackers and crackers and all those bad guys that are trying to get into your site. So I see it all the time that the bad guys are trying to find exploits in the outdated software. So if I still have a theme that has had no updates in two years, well, the hackers know that. They're probably trying to read the code and trying to find a way into your site. That's another reason why you, then you don't want to use old sites, old, old themes, that is. What are some of the, um, I don't know what the terminology is, qualities or characteristics that a person should look for? Really, the biggest thing that you want to look for is this one keyword here, responsive layout. Okay. Everything else is really going to depend on what you need. Okay. So my company, we do websites for, for other clients. Maybe one is a salon, one is a restaurant. Well, each one needs specific features on their site. When we research a theme for them, we look at possibilities and we look up restaurant, restaurant leaning themes. And we might look up, it says this one has a built-in reservation system. That would work great. It wouldn't work so well with this other client. So, so those sorts of details and features, it really depends on your, your client. This one says it works great for businesses, corporations, portfolios, and products. It doesn't say anything about restaurants, so it might not be good. But what you always do want to look at, look for on any new theme is that it is responsive. And that simply means that it has the built-in ability for the for it to look nice on a big monitor like this and then respond and get smaller for a mobile device, respond when you go on a tablet size, respond to the projector size, because nowadays the search engines care about that. <clears throat> if your website does not look good on mobile devices, the search engines like Google and Bing and Yahoo are going to penalize you and you're not going to appear as high as you used to. If you find a responsive layout theme, all the better. Right, though. So I only kept two themes one backup theme, 2015, and one main theme. Did everyone do that? Okay, I want to go back to the I want to go back to the updates screen. Remember that one way is under dashboard updates. So my notes here. Back update the theme. Update your current active theme and update your, your one backup theme. The next step would be the, the plugins. We've only got one plugin. Well, actually, we've got a couple plugins on our site, but only one at the moment is asking for updates. One of these called Akismet. And the same thing that I've said with plugins, you would also apply, I'm sorry, the same thing that I just said with themes, you would apply to plugins. In that update your active plugins. Here, I also, even though I can have 13 plugins, but only six of them are active, I don't want all of those seven plugins just hanging around, not doing anything, taking up my resources, making me vulnerable to attackers. So, Let's go take a look at where in WordPress do we look at all of our installed plugins? Plugins, that one's easy. Let's go look at plugins, installed plugins. We've got Akismet, Duplicator, Hello Dolly. 
we know we've got duplicator because we use it every time. Maybe we didn't know we had a kismet, and we probably did not know at all we had Hello Dolly. So on this screen here, it tells me at the top all of my theme, uh, all of my plugins, three, one active plugin, two inactive, and one has an update. So you can look at them in, in this way, show me only my active plugins, show me my inactive, whatever. But anyway, I've got three plugins. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't download plugins and just have them hanging around for no reason. Uh, I know for myself, when I was first working with WordPress, I like to download a lot of plugins to test them out. But after I've gone through the years of learning what the best ones are for me or my clients, I only keep the, the main ones that I need. So looking at these, I can tell you right away, you don't need the Hello Dolly plugin. This is sort of like a placeholder plugin for people to create their own plugins. And honestly, that's even advanced for me. So I'm not going to worry about that plugin. I'm not going to need that plugin anymore. So how do you think I get rid of it? Just delete. Delete the Hello Dolly plugin. It'll confirm. Are you sure you want to delete all its files? Yes, delete the files. And so that leaves us with Duplicator, which we definitely need and use, and something called Akismet. At the moment, we're not going to use Akismet yet, but I don't want to delete it. Akismet is a way for us to help prevent spam. Um, remember last month we talked about the ability for people to add comments to our site. People can comment and reply to our blog posts. Well, if people can do that, so can spam bots. A plugin like Akismet helps protect against that spam. And it says it needs, a, it needs an update. It's currently on version 3.1.4, and it's recommending 3. Point, it's currently on 3.1.1, and it's recommending to go to 3.1.4. Well, as I said previously, if you go from WordPress 3 to 4, that might break your site. How do you know it'll break your site? All of these, all of these updates usually give you some sort of preview, some sort of um, update information that will help inform you, should I make that change? Here do you see that it says, View version 314 details. Click on that. Most of the time, unfortunately, these things are pretty technical, but it's a, let's read here. Released on September 24th, fixed a bug that was preventing some users from automatically connecting using Jetpack if they didn't have a current Akismet subscription. Fixed a bug that would cause comments caught as spam to be placed in the pending queue, etc., etc. So here you're going to get an update, a technical description on what this update will do. And maybe when you look here and it says, warning, this plugin is not compatible with that plugin. That's definitely then when you would have pause and you would figure out, do I need that update or not? Do the pros of updating outweighs the negative? negatives? So it's a little bit of bedtime reading there. I'm just going to close it. And I'll go back to my updates screen. Back on my notes. Okay, I'm going to update my active plugins. But then I'm going to further say first update most important plugin plugins you are going to decide about your plugins which is the most important this one i really needed to run my site like when we do the e-commerce plugin so that might be the plugin i want to update first it, my whole site relies on that plugin i don't want to waste my time by updating all the plugins and then I get to one of the important ones suddenly something fails 
and I have to restore, I have to resurrect a backup. I'm going to update my main WordPress, I'm going to update the theme. When I get to plugins, my most important one, test the site. To be even more paranoid, you can update the, the plugins and then test the site and then make a backup. So he doesn't have even more backups. That's obviously at a certain point a lot of work. I'll tell you what we do in a moment as a, as a web design company. I'm just giving you the worst, the biggest possible solution. I'll give you the more streamlined solutions in a moment. But do you see that it's not a simple matter of simply do your updates. Updates are important, but you just simply don't want to update. There's a lot of pieces of this puzzle. And it's very easy that when you've got a list of seven plugins, to select them all and click Update. Very easy, but I don't recommend it. Because it's just going to go in order alphabetically. And it has happened to me. And for me, when it happens once, that's too many times. It has happened to me for a client that we have seven plugins that they need an update. And I just hit, yeah, do them all. And they went through these right here alphabetically. And they got to, you know, letter, uh, letter N eventually. And it updated an important plugin, and then the site broke. Well, I just wasted my time and bandwidth updating those six plugins until this one broke. And then I had to back up, I had to resurrect a backup and try again. So I'm going to have a little aside here. If you get, uh, if you if you run into problems. Deactivate a plugin and then try again. It does work that you turn off the plugin, you do your updates, and then you try again. You don't know when you're going to need to do this. For me, often I don't need to. It seem, I might seem to have good luck. I don't seem to need to do that extra step, but if you run into problems that your updates don't work, try to, uh, try to deactivate plugins. Not delete them, of course. You're going to lose your settings. Deactivate them. You can deactivate a plugin when you are in your plugins screen here. Duplicator is currently active. Well, I just click deactivate. I didn't lose any settings. They're still there, and when I click Activate, it comes back. If you need to deactivate a plugin, you're going to go to the Plugins screen and go to where the plugin is active and click Deactivate. This one isn't active yet, so it doesn't say deactivate. Reactivate it. We need that duplicator plugin. Question. So if there is a problem and now you deactivated that plugin, then what do you do if you feel like it's duplicator and you need it? You want to deactivate the plugin and then go back to try to do the updates. Okay. And if updates work, then reactivate the plugin. If updates still don't work, even though the, uh, the plugin is deactivated, the next step might be to delete the plugin, then try the update. If that works, then reinstall the plugin, reactivate it, and then set it up again. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry. What, what do you <coughs> click on now? I, I was, I'm still at your previous page. I didn't have the... Uh, the I'm in the screen of plugins. I went to the installed plugins screen, and then on that screen you have the option to deactivate. You're not going to, but I'm just saying that's the screen where you would. So you see, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a process to update. Um, 
but they're necessary because they solve security issues, they give you new features and so forth, but you have to have a plan. When we do this for our own company, because we have experience, we've, you know, collectively we've been doing this for a long time. I myself personally have been ma making websites since the year 2001, making, uh, making WordPress websites since about 2009 or 10, so been a little while. Um, and I've had the problems too, and uh, tried to figure out solutions and such, and for us the way we do it is we definitely make the starting backup. Before any big updates, we make the, the backup. Well, maybe I should have a step back here. Decide on frequency. How frequently will you do your updates? Because these things might update, you know, these things might tell you that it needs an update every few weeks, let's say. I wouldn't be updating that often. I would decide on a frequency. And I would recommend, because we do it like this, once a month, at least. Once a month, on the first day of the month or whatever, log on to the site, check your updates, and then do your updates. Decide on, on the frequency. Maybe you want to do it every other week. Sure. That'll be more work. If you've got the time for it, great. But I'm going to say once a month is good. And then also decide when to update. This is specifically about time of the day or even day of the week. I wouldn't try to do these updates in the middle of the day. Because whenever these updates are currently active, it deactivates your site. Your site goes into maintenance mode. So if someone tries to visit your site, when you're doing updates, they're going to see site is down for maintenance, and you're going to lose money, especially if you're a shopping cart site. So maybe decide when to do these updates. You know, one possibility on the weekends after hours. So 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m., you know, what's outside of your normal operating hours, so that when your site is deactivated for a little while, you're not losing customers, and also you're not, you're not getting a lot of traffic to your site interfering with the process of the updates. Question. Do you do this for your clients? Do you, or do you allow the clients to do No. Your... The client is busy running their company and running, you know, the details of their company. They hired us because they don't know how to do this, or they don't want to do this, or they don't have time for this. Yeah. So sure, we can teach them how to do this and let them do it, but really the, the, that client is busy running their company, not the infrastructure. So usually my company is doing this for a client. Okay. So we do this once a month. We do it maybe on the weekends or after hours because if there's a problem and we need to resurrect it up, we need to resurrect the backup in the middle of the day. We're losing even more traffic. Uh, we do the backup. We do the core WordPress. Do a quick test. Um, I shouldn't say it, but then we skip this backup because usually things are okay at this point. Then we do the update of the theme. Of course, the most active and current themes. And we skip, we skip the test because usually the, the theme updates don't really do so much of a change to you, unless it's version 1 of the theme up to version 2. And then we usually skip the backup there also. Then do the plugins. This is when we actually then, definitely the big important plugins, like the e-commerce plugins. Do that. Check that that's working. And then depending on various factors, make a backup at that point. Because then at that point, that backup does have all of these big important updates. Then do these final little theme updates. One more final backup, and then we can delete that one. Because this final backup has all the updates. Yes? That, that's, yeah, that's the topic of child themes and such, which we will get to, which is another can of worms. Yes? How, how do you actually plug in, protect you from, um, from the spam? You, you mean like this one, Akismet? Yes. How does it do it? It just, it just does it. We turn it on, 
and it's automatically going to be running and checking all messages that someone writes and if it follows into the pattern of spam it gets rid of it and if it doesn't hit that pattern then it lets it go so it just works automatically you just need to have it turned on and so it works pretty well in, in, in this, this one has two yes a kismet and duplicator but then you just use the main meter, the duplicator, right? No, it really depends. When we get more advanced, we're going to see we're going to use other plugins such as Redirection and Jetpack and uh, the e commerce. So we can have plenty, we can have many plugins as we want. Uh, it's just that only keep the ones that really you are using. So, did you recommend it at least two, right? One, the main one, and one better? No, that was for the theme. But the theme is where you want your main theme and then a backup theme. Right. Plugins right. is different. You have, you have the, uh, the one, the clean one, and you have the 2015. Yes. But for the proxy, so you have the duplicator and the uh, two. Nope. Okay. Once again, you can have many, as many as you need, as many plugins as you need to make your site work. I'm not saying you need to have a main one and a backup one. That doesn't make sense. You're going to have as many plugins as you need in order for your site to work. But just as theme, it's just yeah, the theme I would recommend just two. Well, saying all of that, let's do some updates here. Over on the updates screen, so you help me out here. I have a lot to update here. What's my first step? Assuming I already did the backups. Core. Core WordPress update right here. So this says there's an updated version of WordPress. Let's go ahead and update. Click update now. What that does is it connects to the main wordpress.org server and it's going to put your site in maintenance mode. If someone were to visit my site on the internet right now, it would say something about your site is unavailable. And this might happen quickly or slowly. That's why you want to do it not in the middle of the day. You want to do it at 10 p.m. or in the weekend or something out of the way. Yes? If you want to go back to the site, uh, your address is localhost slash WordPress slash WP admin. So I did the WordPress update and it says welcome to version 4.3.1 and I get a video here about telling me what's new. The, uh, the WordPress developers are, are, are interesting because they have WordPress with different version numbers but they also have a code name and their code names are based on jazz musicians. So we've got WordPress 4.3 Billy. And so here it tells you these are new things, new features. <coughs> oh, this is good. Comments turned off on pages. Usually you don't want comments on the about page on the contact page. In the old version of WordPress you would get comments on those pages, which doesn't make sense for here. Let's go back to the... You could, but it doesn't make sense to have comments on an about page. Well, I'm just thinking about some of the other pages. If you have other pages, then you have the option of turning them off and on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the updates. So one down. Now it says, okay, you've got the latest version of WordPress. What do I update next? Themes. 
So with the themes, I didn't quite say it, but with the themes also I would do them in order of importance. I would do my main, up, I would do my main active theme first. In my case, 2015 is the active theme. So I can click the check mark there, update theme. So that one was pretty fast. It did the update, and then it says, okay, disabling maintenance mode, back to normal, return to the themes, or return to the updates. I'm going to return to the updates. Next, I'll update my canyon theme. And we will have a deeper discussion about this later, but do you notice here, please note, any customizations you have made to the theme files will be lost. Please consider using child themes. This is a bigger discussion we'll have later, but when we customize, and this is different and it's confusing, we have appearance customized. But that's different from what it's saying here. This is if you customize the files. So if you need to edit, for example, the code of your site, remember we mentioned briefly, I think we mentioned briefly, Appearance Editor will allow us to edit the raw code of the site. If we ever edit the raw code of a theme and then select to update the theme, all of our changes will be lost because this is giving us the latest version of the theme without our changes. It's giving us out of the box, here's the latest version of the theme. Well, how do you avoid that? There's a whole discussion we'll get to about child themes. For the moment, we have not customized anything of our site code-wise, so we're not in any danger. But I know that when we do this for real clients, and we have a theme for them, but we need very specific customization, we often have to edit the code. We have to pull open the code, edit the HTML, and when we have to do that, we have to make sure we update properly, that we don't delete those updates. We'll get to that later, but that's the advanced thing we need to talk about later. Go ahead and do your updates for the theme. Return to updates. And the last thing I need to update is a is one plugin. And if I had more than one, I would go through them in the order of importance. Let's say I had Duplicator and a Kismet. I would probably say Duplicator is the more important of the two. That's the one that allows me to make a copy of my site. If that's not working, I can't make a copy of my site and I'm missing a big safety net. So I only have a Kismet to update. So let's update it. Select it and update plugin. What does that do? What does the Akismet plugin do? Yeah. Once again, the Akismet plugin helps you uh, helps prevent your spam because it monitors um, comments people make on your site and deletes the bad comments and leaves the good comments through. And so now, on my updates, I have no more number here and no number up there. All my, my site is perfectly updated. It's got the latest version of the software. I'm most protected. That's why we would want to do updates. But it's not just simply click Update All. We need to be smart about it and have a plan. Yes? Why would you have a Kismet password? We never got around to it. We will. But it's it's been hanging around there. When we installed WordPress from the beginning, it had that plug. It had Akismet, and it hello it had Hello Dolly built in, just like it had a couple of themes built in. But we never got around to dealing with them. We will this month when we talk more in depth about more plugins, and we will use them. I'll mention about five or six plugins that I highly recommend, how to use them and such, and that is one of them. Okay, so we'll take one more break and then we'll talk uh, some other features of WordPress. But at least here we've updated our software, we're protected and such. It's 3.20, we'll take a 10 minute break, we'll be back at 3.30. If you need any help, call me over and we'll fix it.